behind you, we actually have a photograph of you in 1965 leading the Fiesta Parade. Can you describe your memories of that day from oh. start to finish? <laughs> yes, it's, yes, I certainly can describe that day. It's very vividly and been retained in my memory. It's, of course, as you know, an August event, and so it's very hot. And I'd gotten dressed at home with the help of our, my mother and my sister. And our father was a sailor, as were we. And he went to have lunch at the Yacht Club and dropped me off at this location. And this location is at the end of Cabrillo Boulevard, just before the harbor, at the um, bathhouse. And they were assembling the horses and the police cars to begin the parade. And as the spirit, I would be the first sole dancer and then my court behind me. And none of us, of course, had done this before. And so we were a little hesitant as to when we should really start. And so we spent time kind of practicing in the area. And then when it began, it was like, oh my gosh, it's really beginning. And little did we know how long it would seem and how many hours would go by before we could really ever have a quiet moment again. I don't think we quite comprehended the distance and the time it would take. Um, so that's a very distinct memory. Um, I loved my dress, which my mother had made. It's white with red lace, and I had red Spanish dancing shoes on, and red roses in my hair. And it was just a day I will never forget. My name is Marta Holzman. Babson, and my affiliation with Fiesta was I was the spirit of La Fiesta in 1965. So where and when were you born? I was born in Chicago, Illinois in, in May of 1947. And we moved out here to California, to Santa Barbara, specifically Montecito. Um, at the age of about four. So can you describe your childhood growing up in Santa Barbara and in Montecito? Yes, it was um, magical in so many ways. Um, my sister and I lived in a home that, of five acres on a hillside that overlooked the bird refuge and the ocean and the islands. And we were free to roam around outside and enjoy all that nature provided. And yet our mother felt it was very important for us to not just live in that world, but to know our community and to understand Santa Barbara and what it, its heritage was. Our mother was Swiss and um, my sister and I didn't know much about Spanish culture, but we learned in school about the pioneers coming west and the settlers and before that the Indians and of course the Spanish and Mexicans. And being a part of that history always seemed like something, particularly our mother guided us to want to contribute to the community and be a part of it, regardless of our ethnicity or um, actual roots. So you mentioned you have a sister. What is your sister's name and what is the age difference between you two? My sister is Henrietta and we are one and a half years apart in age. And so we were best friends growing up. And then as we went away to school and our formative years, um, we didn't necessarily live in the same area geographically, but we were always connected in so many ways, but I think a big part of it was our childhood growing up here in Santa Barbara. It, was, it made a very strong impact. And we have circled back here in the last 10 years 
and both live here now also. So it's a full circle of life. So you two grew up doing um, most of the same activities together? Or did you have different interests and hobbies? We did some of the things together and much not. We were different um, and yet we enjoyed many of the same things and we truly took pleasure in each other's success and shared in the failures, although there weren't many. And um, it was competitive, but in a good way, um, not in a mean-spirited way. So it made us um, prepared for life in the big world as we grew up. Um, and you always knew you had a sister, no matter what. The best in the world feeling. Good sisterly competition. <laughs> so I understand you were a dancer. Did you both grow up dancing, or was that your main hobby that you pursued? It, it was my main hobby that I pursued. Um, Henrietta also danced, but somewhat reluctantly, and I think at our mother's um, insistence that she go also. But I loved it. I studied um, Spanish dancing and ballet. And um, particularly ballet, I liked. Um, it felt very much more, it felt a little more compatible with me. Um, but I liked Spanish dancing very much. I, I um, enjoyed the, uh, uh, the lack of restraint in Spanish dancing compared to the discipline in ballet. So it was quite different, and yet each in its own way was very exact. I, I hope that makes any sense. It does, it does. How old were you uh, when you first started practicing dance? Oh, I was in first grade, six years old. Um, and I would go to class after school. Mother would drive me. And um, I studied with a Russian, former Russian, uh, a Russian former prima ballerina here in town, Madame Maria Kadrina, at her home slash studio. And um, we performed at the Libero. And it was all very exciting. And Spanish dancing, um, I studied with Jose Monero, whose studio is right across in, in De La Guerra Plaza, up those steps there. Um, I think it's still there, probably a different name, but it was kind of the Spanish dancing school at the time. Um, so I liked them both, but they were very, very different. Mm -hmm. And then I liked, um, you know, dancing with boys and school and all of that too. So, but that was not taking lessons. <laughs> and Although I did teach ballroom dancing later on in life. And what I made you, that. oh sorry, go ahead. No, I just forgot about that. <laughs> what made you decide to, um, pursue Spanish dance? Was it watching it performed at Old Spanish Days Fiesta, or was it something that you fell into as a result of uh, other dancing? It was so much a part of Santa Barbara and the culture and every having fiesta every summer. And again, as I credit our mother with wanting us to really embrace the meaning of the town we lived in and its history and to participate to the extent that we could um, and honor the memories of all those that came before us and their, what they had built and created that we now enjoyed and um, to be reflective of it. So I tried to do that. Can you remember uh, your first time watching um, a fiesta parade or performance when you were young? Oh yes, mm -hmm. we, uh, my sister Henrietta and I were little flower girls in what they called the children's parade. And we just thought that was the most wonderful thing. We had our little baskets filled with flowers, which we picked in our garden. And um, we would, you know, throw, we'd walk along and throw them. We didn't dance, well, we sort of, walked, danced, strolled, um, and that probably got us started, uh, which is probably the case with many of the spirits, I would think, in the years to follow, 
that they began as in the children's parade, or as flower girls. I think they call that now. Uh, how old were you when you were first in the oh, children's um, parade? Uh, you know, grade school, like seven, something like that, I think. Eight? <laughs> first, second, third grade, fourth grade? Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> so, what made you decide? So you, how many years were you dancing in uh, Fiesta prior to becoming Spirit? Well, it, in, the, in, the, in the children's uh, category, so to speak, um, for maybe three or four years um, until we were too old for that. And then um, we didn't really participate other than um, some performances through the Jose Monero company. And to be honest, I'm not sure I actually, at that point, kind of knew there was a, quote, older girl that led the parade, the spirit. I mean, I knew, obviously, someone started the parade, but you know, we weren't kind of aware of it, particularly growing up in our dance classes. And um, when I did sort of become aware that there was an opportunity to play that role or to try out for that role. Um, I was hesitant and because I hadn't been dancing consecutively here in Santa Barbara, I had gone away to school. And so I came back and um, it seemed very natural. It just, everything came back to me. Um, and so it was as though I had just sort of taken a little bit of time off, but then quickly was able to find the steps again and the, and the uh, ability to play castanets, et cetera, which, while dancing. So uh, we had tryouts. And at that time, I think my court had four people, four other dancers. Um, and they all seemed older than me. And I remember thinking that. But I don't know that they really were. For some reason, I just thought they were. And I was very surprised when I was chosen, but of course, very excited. And I can remember distinctly wondering if I was, would be the right choice for the community in that I wasn't of Spanish heritage. Um, and so, you know, that was something that I always had in my mind. But I thought, well, I'll just be a really good dancer and no one will, no one will mind. And that's, I hope, what my performances showcased during my reign, so to speak. Do you have a memorable performance during that week of Fiesta? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. What was it? Um, dancing on opening night at the Mission. It's very special. I'm sorry, I'm almost at the memory. It's um, the lights and the people and the history. It was quite something. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's emotional. Yeah, about it's it. because you think back and you're so young at that time and you don't know, you haven't seen the world, you don't know as much and yet you knew this was impactful and somehow you knew I'm sorry, somehow you knew this would be something you would remember all your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember thinking that. And yet, how did I know I, I hadn't lived the next 50 years yet? So, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's an experience you won't forget. No. <laughs> and there was one other venue that I thought was very special. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was in the sunken gardens at the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And my sister Henrietta joined me on stage that day, and um, <clears throat> which was even more fun for us. We'd dress at home, get in the car, come down, and um, it was a beautiful setting to look out and see all the people. And everyone was there in the spirit of fiesta.
to celebrate. So that is a very busy week. Yes. Daisha's son, Jack, is just spirit. I Lisa. know. I met Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Working here and watching Daisha <laughs> run him from performance to performance yes. to performance, it, it was, I did not envy her. <laughs> no. And, and it, I have to admit that it has picked up the pace from my ears. But it was, it seemed very busy mm -hmm. even then, but it's much more so now. Do you recall how many performances you had per day during the week or how many in total you might have danced that week? I don't remember exactly, but um, how many performances I um, had to do or not had to do, um, was invited to do. But there certainly were multiple events every day. So it seemed busy. Mm -hmm. And who were the people, you mentioned your sister joined you on stage for one, but who were the people that were with you um, helping you get dressed and get from performance to performance? Oh, we, 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 didn't, we didn't have anyone to help us. I guess this was my sister. Mother. Mother. Yes, I suppose, I, I guess our mother also helped with dressing. She, my mother, our mother, um, made my costume. She sewed it. And uh, in the picture, as you can see, it's a white dress with red lace. And I, so I, I, that's why I wore red and white today, which um, I don't know if the camera can see. But anyway, um, and I had red Spanish dancing shoes and, of course, red roses in my hair. And she loved the idea that she was contributing to my performance by sewing my costume. And she was not a dancer at all. And she sewed my sister's costumes also. So she was very much a part of it in, in, in her contribution. So you had your, your main spirit dress. Yes. Did you wear any other costumes at performances? No, no I, wore, I always wore the sport spirit dress. Um, and in those days, the spirit had to wear white. I'm not sure that's exactly the case now, because I think some performances, this is a little different this year, of course, with Jack, but in the past, I think most of the spirits had different outfits for different events. But for some reason, in my year, it was always your, your singular outfit. Were all of your performances um, solely you, or did you dance with a, a dance group at all? No, sometimes I, there was uh, accompanying dancers, but I was always by myself. I did not have a partner. Like, um, so, I mean, it, some dances you do have a partner, but not the ones that the spirit usually is asked to perform. So I would be dancing alone. Center stage. <laughs> Pardon me? Center stage. Center stage. <laughs> um, let's see. So what, how has uh, Fiesta changed since your spirit? What are some of the noticeable differences? You just mentioned one with you had to wear white. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, as you pointed out, I think earlier in, in our conversation, the number of requests for the spirit appearance has multiplied greatly as spirit, I mean, as Fiesta has become more, I think, has been greatly embraced by the community. I think it's terrific. I mean, I thought this last Fiesta had multiple events at multiple venues every day. Um, and as a result, Everybody wants to have the, the spirit make an appearance. Um, we just didn't have as much. It just was a smaller um, smaller group of events, I guess is the best way of saying it. Um, I'm not sure if that answers it completely enough. You might do the route because it's route. longer. Sorry. Yes. Oh, thank you for reminding me about the route. Mm -hmm. um, in my day, it began down at the beach um, 
bathhouse by the park where they assembled the horses. And then we went down Cabrillo Boulevard to where to State Street, and then we drove. We we, we drove. We <laughs> danced our way up State Street to Mission Street. It was, I believe, two and a half miles, two point four, I believe. Um, and I remember distinctly my sister following the whole way with me and intermittently when we had a pause and a rest um, due to technical problems or something, horses acting up, who knows what was going on. My sister would run out with a little lemonade or something for me to drink. It was hot, it's August, and the pavement is hot, and it was uphill. So uh, you did have to be young to be <laughs> the spirit. Um, and when we finished up at Mission Street, and they're taking the horses and you know ha having to get everybody keep moving along so the next people could come, there was an ice cream shop there at that time. McConnell's was located at that corner. And I remember we met my parents and my sister was there, and we all went to have ice cream in my in my spirit outfit. That was, I remember that as being just a wonderful kind of reward after being so hot and dancing for so long. And I didn't have to do anything else that day, as I remember. I don't think I did anything else that day. And I not, no other appearances, I mean, that evening. Or, so that was great. I love that story. <laughs> the, per the perfect way to end the day. <laughs> it, it was. So, do you recall any memories um, participating with uh, other folks involved uh, in Fiesta at the time, like El Presidente or mm -hmm. St. Barbara? Uh, St. Barbara was sort of a figure on a float in my mind at that point in time. Um, since then, I've come to recognize it as, of course, much more than that and actually know some of the St. Barbaras. But at that time, it was just an older person who was in a, on a float. Um, the El Presidente um, was at the judging committee when you tried out. So I knew who he was, and he was always very nice. And we had a reception, or I should say, he, he had a reception for everyone in the beginning, just like they do now. Um, but it was a singular event, and so there wasn't nearly as much, um, there just weren't as many events. It was just a smaller, a smaller towns, smaller events. So going back to our, an earlier part of our conversation when you were selected as Spirit, um, I understand you were in school in Massachusetts, is that correct? Oh, um, yes, I was in school in Massachusetts. But this was, of course, summertime. Yes. Right. So I came back. I mean, school was over. I came back, and um, we were a sailing family, and I was sort of looking forward to a summer of sailing with my sister. And instead of that, I was sort of greeted with, why don't you try out to be the spirit? Not exactly something I had thought about, but as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm so grateful that I did try, even if I hadn't been selected. Um, so yes, I came back and um, the tryout was at um, the El Paseo. And so you danced in that uh, dance floor area that they still have for the tryouts. And I remember the judges all sitting there and sort of being scared, but you know. Um, the other people were too, I'm sure, so. Could your friends or family come watch you? I know they can today. Was your sister able to see you? Uh, I don't try think out? my sister was there. Mm -hmm. She will have to tell you if she was there. I don't remember that. I, I, don't, I don't think we were allowed. It was, it was very formal. I mean, it was. Yeah. It, it, it was there were, it, now I know they're at the libero, and you can bring your fan club with you. Yes. I didn't have a fan club. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure there was no one else 
there from the family. So I was alone. I don't blame you for feeling nervous. That is, yes. that is very scary. Yeah, it was. Um, how Did you have to uh, participate in the oral interview as well? I know they do an interview um, with spirits. Yes, um, yes. And again, I felt very much that they wouldn't pick me because I felt I was and I kind of looked different than the others. I had blonde hair and blue eyes, and um, you know, it just, uh, I was surprised that they selected me. But I can assure you it was based totally on dancing ability. <laughs> you practiced with Jose Monero. Do you have yes. memories of uh, learning from him and being oh, in yes. that studio? Yes, very much so. Walking up those steps to go to class, and our mother waiting in the car down below when class was over and coming down and, you know, going home. But I, I, I loved it. I mean, I looked forward to my dance classes. So he wasn't, was I, he a hard teacher? Was he a fun teacher? I, he was strict, but nothing is as strict as the Russian prima ballerina with her stick. Yes, I mean, you know, knee straight, higher leg, turn right, you know, hold that pose. And the cheap. So Jose Monero was fun comparatively. That's great. I love that story as well. <laughs> um, so you went back to school after that summer had ended. Yes. How did you describe to your friends and your classmates what you had just done at the time for people who did not know what Old Spanish Day Siesta was? To uh, well, that's an interesting question, but to be honest, I didn't particularly share it because it was completely a foreign sort of concept to many people who either didn't know California or certainly Southern California or the old Spanish days. I mean, it just, it wouldn't have had the meaning to them, and I guess I didn't really talk about it, to be honest. I, yeah. <laughs> How would you describe, uh, if you're telling people who don't know about it now, how would you describe Fiesta to folks who've never visited or experienced it before? I would describe it as a unique celebration that a community has persevered in keeping the history and the culture alive through various events. and. It's a remarkable achievement when you look back at the old at the pictures from earlier years and you see the streets lined with people to watch the parade and the horses and the reputation that the town of Santa Barbara and this particularly the El Desfile Historico have is extraordinary and it's only grown with the years. So that's a real testament, I think, to the management of, of our community. We should all be very proud and participate. And how do you feel about Fiesta turning 100? Well, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I hope to be part of it. Um, let's see, that'll be next mm -hmm. year. Next year, yeah. next August. 1924. Okay, I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> We're I'll, look, here. I'll, look for, I'll look forward to it. Hopefully there'll be something really fun and memorable that could mark that. You know, I think it would be memorable for, for lots of the spirits that are still floating around, the ones that are here on Earth and the ones that perhaps are no longer with us. So you came back, uh, you finished school. Yes. And what did you do after you graduated? I was a journalism major in college. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought I was going to be a war reporter or something. You know, I don't know what I thought, but that's what I hope to be. I did not, I was a television and radio um, <clears throat> broadcast major and so I did some speaking and some narrating voiceovers, with, I think they're called now more, um, but I really never pursued it as a career. I went into the investment world and have stayed with that, so. Very impressive. And did you come back to Santa Barbara after uh, graduating from college? Not much. Um, our parents still lived here 
for a while. But when they sold our home, I really didn't come back. And so about 10 years ago, my sister and I, I called up my sister and I said, would you like just to go back to Santa Barbara and take a walk down memory lane? And so we cleared a week from our very busy schedules and checked into the, uh, checked into the Biltmore, which was open at that time, and just kind of reveled in all going around and looking at everything. And what I found was that in all those decades that had passed, there was so much that was still very recognizable and relatable. And yet, of course, time had moved on and things had, had for the better, in the sense of modernization, et cetera. Um, but as a result of feeling very comfortable with so much that was familiar, um, we both started looking at real estate listings within about a day or two. So we were hooked. And uh, we both now uh, have a home here. So um, it's been very interesting. My sister has a avocado and lemon ranch. And I have a home in Montecito. So, Lovely. so you came back home. <laughs> we came back home. And we, both, we did it together. So it's a full circle. And it's, it just couldn't be more meaningful. And do you recall your first fiesta? back in Santa Barbara when you moved back here permanent? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, it was very exciting because, you know, we hadn't been in so, so long. And um, it was the first year that they did it just um, on Cabrillo. So that was a different, different time. Um, Do you recall what year that was? I'm not sure. Well, that was during um, COVID that okay. it was just there. So the first time we came back for it probably is in 2013 or 2014. No, no, Maybe it wasn't. No. I'm sorry, I don't quite, I'm not sure quite what the year would have been. That's okay. Um, but you recall seeing it on Cabrillo. Yes. And that, that must have been interesting. It, it was. was yeah. And I, of course, had never seen the parade, really. You know what I mean? I, yes. And certainly not as an adult. And um, it was different, of course. Time had moved on. But many of the additions to the parade and the ideas um, behind them, behind those additions, were interesting. Um, I think we had more dancing in my day. And now I think we have more, um, well, there always were lots of horses, but maybe more. Um, Bands isn't quite the right word, but music, whatever, however that was coming. So wonderful. <laughs> and have you attended Fiesta every year since moving I, back to Santa We have. Area? We have. And we've toyed with the idea of actually being in the parade, but we haven't quite decided yet whether we want to do that or not. Maybe that will be. But what it, you might, it might be that hundredth. It might be that hundredth. That's what we're considering. So that would be another one of those very full circles of life, if it were to happen. <laughs>